one of the most important mood disorders we talk about is depression right so what is depression we typically say yes i was depressed about this depressed about that i'm depressed about the traffic jam i'm depressed about the climate so is it depression you need to understand most of us do feel sad but depression is little different depression is a clinical syndrome typically people believe depression to be low mood state but it is important to understand depression is m e i problem in today's world we can make it into emi problem most of us have installments to pay and those things so what is this emi standing for emi stands for e stands for energy problem m stands for mood problem i stands for interest problem can you tell me what is loss of interest in pleasurable activities called as previously pleasurable activities called as anhedonia right so you need to know depression typically can lead to three important thing one is low energy low mood and decreased interest levels so the clinical syndrome doesn't only restrict to this it can lead to fatigue it can lead to psychomotor retardation what do you mean by psychomotor retardation psychomotor retardation basically means they become slow in their walking talking thinking if you ask them a question they take a lot of time to answer these questions that's pretty common in people with depression guilt can happen sometimes the guilt can be to an extent of something called as pathological guilt it can be to the extent of pathological guilt which can happen in some people crying spells decreased libido decreased appetite the appetite low could also lead to weight loss in many individuals suicidal ideas are quite a common problem in a lot of people who are depressed so if you see some of these features are very non specific it happens in many one of us very fleetingly some of them are very specific to depression which can actually happen there are different levels of depression mild depression moderate depression severe depression and severe depression with psychotic symptoms for you to basically consider a diagnosis of depression out of these three things at least two features should be there at least two features out of the three should be involved these are core features of depression out of three at least two should be involved the rest can be any one of these things which can be there depending on the intensity of the problem we can call it as mild depression moderate depression severe depression and severe depression with psychotic symptoms psychotic symptoms in mild depression typically the functionality is pretty much fine they are able to do their jobs roles pretty well the sleep and appetite that is the vegetative symptoms are also pretty much fine in mild depression in moderate depression they have sleep problems appetite problems that is the vegetative symptoms have gone for a toss but the functionality is pretty much okay still they are able to go to the job they are kind of to, um, uh, able to maintain their routines they kind of can still mask their depression and move on severe depression people unfortunately vegetative symptoms also have gone for a toss functionality also has gone for a toss what is this severe depression with psychotic symptoms if you remember earlier in one of the videos we would have spoken about mood congruent or secondary delusion so here we are talking about mood congruent or secondary psychotic symptoms 
what do you mean by secondary psychotic symptoms here typically because they are feeling very very sad over a period of time they might start hearing voices which tells oh you are waste jump and die why are you alive why are you eating your food so such kind of things could be called as mood congruent or secondary psychotic symptoms which are very classically seen in patients with depression in the same way like low mood we also can treat people who are feeling happy now you might be wondering why do you treat people who are happy and uh, at least uh, depressed people want to want to commit suicide sometimes so you are trying to prevent them but why are you treating people who are happy we don't treat people who are just happy we treat people who are quite elated elated means kind of lot more happier and kind of in a elevated mood state they start doing a lot of activities they start getting up at uh, early morning 3 o'clock and start cleaning up all the vessels at home they start going to their jobs very early they are doing work through the day lot more activities and those that's very typical of them they can get to become disinhibited they can become over familiar start talking to when strangers on the streets they can also have over spending over grooming increased religiosity suddenly they have become extremely spiritual starting to chant starting to do this going to places of worship more than what their usual self is all those things can also be part of the manic episode which can happen these people typically end up developing something called as delusion of grandiosity what do you mean by delusion of grandiosity delusion of grandiosity means here they develop delusion that they have some extraordinary powers they have some abilities which others don't have sometimes they even go ahead to claim i am only god and those kind of stuff so some uh, like they claim powers which they don't even have that is what is called as delusion of grandiosity which could be typical feature which is seen in manic patients hypomania is a milder form of mania of course the severe one is called as mania with psychotic symptoms again this is an example of secondary psychotic symptoms or mood congruent psychotic symptoms or mood congruent psychotic symptoms i mentioned to you that delusion of grandiosity is typically seen in manic patients in relation to this it's good to know delusion of gra like delusion of grandiosity there is something called as delusion of poverty this delusion of poverty is typically seen in depression patients where they believe they don't have money at all they think they have become paupers they are on the streets wherein they might actually have pretty much money than anybody else but still they believe that they have lost all the money they are on the streets they have zero money all those kind of things that's what is called as delusion of poverty which is asked in exam sometimes another thing which is seen in people with depression which they have asked in exams is about cotard syndrome what is a cotard syndrome cotard syndrome is nothing but delusion of nihilism or nihilistic delusion where they believe everything is zero everything is gone off they believe they've lost everything they have become complete paupers they are bankrupt and those kind of things they uh, they sometimes feel the intestines have stopped functioning there is no blood in my body they feel the parts of the organs have got decayed all those kind of things can happen as part of delusion of nihilism or nihilistic delusion which is also called as cotard syndrome one of the mcqs which has been asked earlier in the exams <music> 